Hello and welcome to Talking Cross. I'm John and I'm here as always with my co-host Bede. Hello Bede. How you doing Jonathan? Bede, I'm not too bad tonight. I will apologise to the the fans and listeners. Yes. Because I'm very hungover. Good God. Still we're, hungover. We were out last night with friends. You're alright because you don't drink alcohol. I'm alright. You're teetotal. Aye. I'm not alright because it was two phone cocktails and I decided to go on the Long Island iced teas. Jesus Christ. So Right, why'd they call it Long Island iced tea, right? If they don't use any sort of tea. <laughs> because it it's apparently tastes like an iced tea. Do you know what an iced tea tastes like? Tea with lemon? Well I tasted that last night and it doesn't taste like <laughs> an iced tea. That's all I'm saying. Does, it, does this mean that you're technically not teetotal anymore? Because you had a couple of sips of my... I mean, I think teetotal's more of an ideology rather than literal amount of drinkage. Right, look, at the end of the day... Ideology? I, need, I don't know if that's I need, right. I need to tell the listeners, you know what I'm like. I'm straight up, I like my vodka and oranges. We know you do. I'm partial to a mojito. Yes. But this... Whilst recording? This place that was doing two for one cocktails... Uh-huh. You've got to get your money's worth. God damn. So instead of just having a one shot of Bacardi and a mojito... I checked the menu, <laughs> and in Long Island iced tea, there's rum, tequila, everything, everything, <laughs> there's about six shots. Let's just say I had a few too many, and I'm still feeling the repercussions now. Well, uh, as I can see in front of us now, John, you've got a, a pint of, of water. <laughs> For the which, first time. It's a fresh change, <laughs> which could, could lead to great results on the podcast, medium. <laughs> it might change the world we know. We may pause, come back, you might hear a couple of clanks of ice cubes, because it might have freshened up. Right. Anyway, Beat, we've just been to see Spider-Man Homecoming. That we have. And we can't wait to discuss it. No, we can't. I threw it off here because I've, wrote, I've obviously got it on my iPad in the notes. Right. And it says Spider-Man Homecoming. Homecoming? No! <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> anyway, right, we can't wait, we can't wait to discuss it. Um, we've changed the setup with the points on we do you want to right we're, we're fighting our feet we are a young innocent charming podcast we're trying to find our way in the world it's hard enough as it is <laughs> we feel we messed up with Baby Driver we're cowering in corners it's my fault I'll take the blame for that one <laughs> I can take it in the flag jacket I wasn't proud of the creative integrity of that show <laughs> <laughs> we're moving on we'll become better smarter was, stronger every day I think again I was half pissed and tired so it was badly edited as well that is correct but we're, we're trying we're trying to we're changing things we'll see how this works we're out we're moving on with the times that we are right so how, how is this going to be set up in your point obviously we're going to go gonna be we're going to go into the, the show is going to follow the usual format yes it's going to have we're still segmented unnecessary top five Yes. Or not not nece- I keep saying unnecessarily I mean, top you're five. You're the segment boy, I don't know what the segments are. I keep saying unnecessarily top five. Yes. Instead of not necessarily top five. Right. It's not the same thing. I mean thing. it's not unnecessary, it is necessary. That's what I'm saying. It's the not necessarily top five. As coined by Bosk, he gets full ownership of that he TM. Does. Yep. Um So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go on to true or false trivia, as mm-hmm. always. Right. And then we'll go into the points. How are the points gonna differ this week? So this, this time around the point system mm-hmm. is Always spoilers. Always spo- Always we're not, spoilers. We're not going to do non-spoilers because let's be serious. That may change, but for this episode and yeah. hopefully the ones to come, it's all spoilers. Yeah. So is that a warning now or should we reiterate that? We'll reiterate it, but we're saying like obviously if, you, if you're listening to this... We'll reiterate that every time we... It's, we it's going to be... Something. Anytime we go to the cinema and watch a film, we're just going to do a spoiler discussion because no one wants to really listen to it. Non-spoilers is boring. I think not boring just uh, <laughs> it's difficult are we order the fans to do non-spoilers we'll see, are we we'll doing, see. this is a test run are we doing spoilers because it's better for us it is better for us in every way but we're not lying about that <laughs> that's fair <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's all spoilers and it's just a free for all of positive and negative opinions right. so on I'll, scenes you've got your points beats. you'll go through them and then what we'll do is before we're going to ratings yes um, I've got a few points written down. We'll go through my points after yours. Yes. Obviously, I'll be t- you. You make the points that you've picked up on, and I'll have a little bit of input to it. Excellent. And then we'll go into ratings. Then we've got a couple of fan questions at the end, 
and then we're going to have a little bit of Game of Thrones discussion, I think, because we're massive Game of Thrones fans. If we've got time. I mean, that is coming back in like two days we're, or whenever this... We keep we have full intention of keeping the podcast down to an hour, but it always runs over. Correct. And I don't know how people feel about I that. I think we try to do 40 minutes. I, 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 don't, I don't know whether people want a long podcast or a short mean, one. I mean... I know. I, I know feel some I'm of a good degree. I mean, no, some I of my friends, that. some of my friends who've listened, yes, are like, "Oh, it should be shorter. It's too long. We what? haven't got, we haven't got time to listen to it." Who said like that? that? Just a couple of my friends. Really? Uh, well, personally, my like, preference. I was like, oh, how, "How many podcasts do they listen to?" Exactly, a podcast is a bloody. Oh, gives the answer. How many podcasts do they listen to? No idea. Apart from us, probably none. There's your problem. Uh, they're only listening to our podcast. I think they might listen to the Ricky Gervais them. show, which is like forty-five. That's minutes. not a podcast. That's a TV show. Is it really? I mean, it was turned into a TV show with animations included. Right. But for my my opinion, that is a TV show. Um, I like podcasts. Mm-hmm. I have many inspirations for wanting to create this podcast. Yep. I can happily go to an environment, maybe work, maybe not work. I don't want to get fired for people finding out that I listen to <laughs> podcasts at work. Uh, and listen to three hours of someone who I found interesting talk. Yeah, so I, I normally listen to podcasts... When I'm mowing the lawn, yeah. When I'm lifting weights in the gym, oh, we'll get you. When I've got my pants down, what? And a hand on my crotch. Oh damn! No, I'm not. Is anybody creating a porn podcast yet? That I haven't searched. If this doesn't take off, <laughs> tell you is it, no, no. You were telling me one of the most famous podcasts there is. Well, th- that is was... a lad reading out his dad's. <laughs> well, that was last week. Sexual fucking erotic novels. Well, two weeks ago, I was just browsing down what the most viewed was, and that I don't know if it's currently, <laughs> but uh, it was just his dad's. His dad <laughs> wrote an erotic novel. I think that's a great, that's a great spin on what you can do with a podcast. He got a couple of friends around, and he narrated each chapter <laughs> for each uh, episode. That's great. So if you can find that, I'd, I'd recommend going and seeing that. Even though I haven't listened to it myself, but the idea fi- is uh, quite fascinating. So there you go. That sounds good to me. There's promotion for other people. <laughs> <laughs> right, bitch, we're moving on then. Absolutely. Straight into the not necessarily top five. Excellent. This week, in order to Spider-Man Homecoming, uh-huh. we're going to do the not necessarily top five. Homecomings in film. Or proms. Well, what's a homecoming be? Right, so <laughs> give me give me what we're allowed. I've got a couple of dubious ones down here, I, I think. I feel the term homecoming is gonna be very lo- loosely. Well, I think we should have probably researched this before. Right. But I'm guessing if you're from England, it's like a prom, maybe? So the end of school? Yes. Where are we now? Going home for the six week holidays? Homecoming. Homecoming Queen? I've heard of that. Prom Queen? Prom queen. Right, it's, it's a prom. It's a prom. Let's it's a prom. That. We're going to say that. <laughs> but I'll hit it off. <laughs> I love how I'm keeping the realisation. <laughs> same time. Top five homecomings in film. Can we say top five proms in film? We'll say prom slash homecoming. Yes, okay. proms. There's going to be proms from now on. Carrie. Carrie. Ends in a ball of flames. That it does. Good film. <laughs> Excellent film. <laughs> Is that... I love Stephen King. Yes. I haven't read Carrie. Is it a Stephen King novel? It is, yeah. It's shocking that I don't know that. What I do know is it was horrendously remade, starring... It, it was, um, I'm sure it was one of his first novels he wrote. Was it? Yeah, up there, yeah, definitely. Um, it starred uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. Yes, in the, the in the remake. Oh, it's a bit it looked weird. awful. Awful, heavy CGI. It looked boring. awful. Like, why retell a story? This is actually quite ironic as it applies to Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh-huh. Why retell a story unless you're going to do it differently and more interesting? And Are you it. talking about Amazing Spider-Man? Well, that applies, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? The reboot of the reboot of the reboot. Just, if you're going to remake something, why do it so blandly? If you give given that opportunity. I'm with you on that one, babe. There you go. But have you got one written down or have you, are we just going to spitball this one? Uh, spitball, I believe. So my top five problems... Is uh, Mark McFly's <laughs> performance of Go Johnny Go <laughs> in the 1950s? Anyway, right, what's your point you want to make on Marty McFly? Should I quickly make a point? Yes. Um, what are the real term implications of singing a song made well after the 1950s in the 1950s? <laughs> well, he said it was an old one. What, ha- what happens to the person who created the song? Do they cease to exist and have a different timeline? It's the butterfly effect, mate. I reckon dinosaurs come back to life. And uh, he could have stopped. Aston Kutcher loses his hands in an explosion. <laughs> Moving on. He's never born. 
I'm going for that. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> He's never born and Morty McFly. There is a website. There is a website with a dedicated fan who's written this out. <laughs> anyway. Someone find it and tell us about it. Beat. Funny enough, since you're on the old... Uh... Timeline? Teen Wolf. Oh my God, what a shout. Unreal. The Teen Wolf prom. Although all I can think about when he has a basketball game. All I can think about is... Just... Like they know, they're all right, aren't they? He's like, high does he make it at the community? He's hiding like dunks down, and they're all right. It destroys them. All I can think of him was hanging on top of that limo. <laughs> That's all I <I'd> see. <laughs> oh, and his dad. He comes out the door, the bathroom, and his dad's a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> right, beat. I, I don't know where we start on this next one. Can I just quickly put in? I apologise. Two you, seconds. You can put in, do whatever you want. Imagine though. if someone joined the Back to the Future franchise with Team Wolf. My God. Money. Mate. There you go. Take it. Print it. I'm TMing it. You, you talk about Teen Wolf. Yes. In the goddamn Back to the Future car. Rick and Morty, you can do that. <laughs> We're going to go back, Morty. Morty. Oh, it's need to come back as well, Rick and Morty. It is, I can't it is. wait. I still Ex- seen the... Excellent things are happening. I episode seen the one. First episode. episode one. Oh, Christ, I keep getting sidetracked. The best metaphor for capitalism I've ever seen. Really? Uh, it's so funny. <laughs> episode one, people have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Right, Pete? Don't know where we stand on this next one. Uh huh. What a film. One of my favourite films. Can you do the film? I don't think it's a prom. I think it's a Halloween party, but. Okay. The Guest. Excellent film. Anyway. <laughs> cool Halloween prom type. Well, it's, not, it's not a prom, is it? It's a Halloween party. I think so. But it's set in like that prom kind yeah, of setting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good enough for us. Honestly. There's if, fog machines. If you haven't seen music. The Guest, if you haven't seen The Guest, watch it. That's all I'm saying. It's a good film. It would have been a great film up until the final act. Maybe we've actually got top five this week know. as well. Do we? Last one. Is this number five? How can you forget it? American Pie. I can forget it. What? <laughs> you know, in the first one, American Pie. The what end, happens? Prom scene. Is that it? Right, it's, just got it's, no it's, prom. Just, it's a stereotypical American prom. It, well, it's a high school movie, isn't it? What is Stifler? Do- yeah, it's a high school movie. Stifler's like no, it's a left gross with no out girls. movie. Is that it? I think that's what happens, I. What happens to Shitbrick? Sh- Shitbrick bangs the old... The, the mi- last of the... the MILF. All oh, right. Wait, Stifler's mom. MILF. MILF. <laughs> MILF. 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 Shitbrick, what a legend. And beat that pretty much wraps it up for an underwhelming, not necessarily top five this week. Good, good. Have you got any more you want to hire in or not? I can't think of any. Uh, top five proms in film is a very, very small... It's vague. What about Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Where they're on the fellowship. Is that a prom? Kind of. Excellent. I think. Gimli Sermon, I'll punch. Actually, no. The staff when that's a part. It's birthday it's a party. party, isn't uh, it? It's a big fucking dragon. It's a big firework know. dragon. I don't think that's allowed. Um, other than that, is there any other problems going on? If you can fire a firework off that turns into a dragon, you've got too much room and it's an underprom building. <laughs> that's the rules. That's fair. Pippin and Merry would also blow someone up. <laughs> And get arrested. <laughs> right, B, that wraps that up. Should we move on to true or false trivia now? We can do. After <laughs> all, mate, record time here or not? Record time, the salted bark <laughs> is particularly good. Gondor calls for <laughs> aid, and Rohan will answer. Oh, hobbits, it's, that's awful, Spiegel. Two Towers is still the best one. I'm leaving it there, moving on. True or false trivia, B? Yep. Your favourite. Let's see how many you can get right. Okay. Six of the best as usual. Is it always six? The last one was six, and this one worked out to be six, so... Let's go. Yeah. Okay. The scene in which Peter, through sheer force of will, lifts the machinery, pinning him down after the vulture forces the structure to collapse on him, is a nod to a scene in The Amazing Spider-Man, novels 31 or 33, in which he does the very same thing. The panels in the comic are considered by many to be some of the most iconic in Spider-Man's history. 100% true. Do you know of this? I know about it. Do you? Yeah. And is it iconic? It is iconic. Why? I don't know. Because <laughs> you're lifting up stuff. This was one of the points I wanted to make about the film, but I will make it up now quickly for you. Yep. Um, I think in the comic book, it's quite similar as in he kind of goads himself into lifting that amount of weight. Yep. Where So it kind of says that Peter's strength is sometimes determined by his willpower. All right. And sometimes, just because it's a comic book, he can find that extra bit. 
When he needs to. When he needs to. I like that. So that can change his. Uh, so not... his power is not sometimes tapped. I'm all for that. By his physical ability. Right, beat next one. The female newscaster on the school news show is Betty Brand. Betty is J. Jonah Jameson's secretary at the Daily Bugle in the comics. 100% true, I also know this. How do you know this, Bede? Because. <laughs> Excuse me. Sneeze. <laughs> I saw it in the film. Did really? Yes. Did and you I click also, on? I also remember out of um, Spider Man 1, her character's name. I remember him keep shouting Betty for some reason. Right. That was really funny. Oh, man. I'm making points about the film now. That was a really funny part of the film. The, the shocking, like. I'll stop you there. We're not making points. It's a true or false trivia. Don't okay. get carried away. It was true. Okay, yes. <laughs> right, B. Tom Hol- Holland can actually do a backflip. Another party treat he performed for the cast was to eat a hot dog with his feet whilst doing a handstand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, obviously you've seen him on YouTube doing the backflips. <laughs> he went to a bloody, he went to a hospital and did a backflip for all like the kids and stuff. What like a that. guy! What awesome. a nice person. Along with that, he had his cast absolutely creasing because <laughs> he can stand on his head and eat a hot dog with his feet. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> right, first of all, it's hundred percent false. Yes, it's fun. Right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right. So, how do you move your feet into a location where you can eat a hot dog? Well, what I was like, thinking was, drop it in he was in a handstand. Yeah. And he's got the feet, and he's just like that can't be done. Contortions himself, and just slangs a hot dog down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My God. <laughs> so would he drop it into his mouth, or would he eat it from his feet? What? Oh, I don't know. I'm moving on. Right, beat next one. Aaron Davis, Donald Glover. Oh, man, you're taking all my points. Mentions he has a nephew. In the comics, Aaron Davis is the ultimate Marvel Universe's version of the villain for the Prowler, whose nephew is Miles Morales. Yes. A.K.A. the second ultimate Spider-Man. Right. True or false, Pete? 100% true. It is. This is another a... point of mine. Well, we'll, move, we'll leave this and move on. You're we don't saying... need to leave it, I'm just saying. Yeah, we will. We'll move, we'll move on. We'll, if you've got a point down saying that, right. then we'll move on because Miles Morales, obviously, cult fame now, really, isn't he? Big time, I. Eh? Um, they enjoy the diversity of the character and his um, his origin story. It's That's quite cool. unique. But we'll obviously, we'll, unique, we'll discuss it more when we go on to the main points. That we will. Steve Buscemi, <laughs> here we go, was rumoured for the part of Uncle Ben, <laughs> even yeah. though Marvel confirmed that the movie would not have an origin story. Right, can I just give you a picture in your head? <laughs> Steve Buscemi, yes, Marissa Tomei. <laughs> All right. Yep. Not happening. So what is the intro of all? False. It's true. <laughs> He's considered his Uncle Benno. You're joking. Steve Buscemi eyes. Steve Buscemi? Yes. Oh, I mean, I, I'm all for if you like someone, you like someone, but does that work? Can you give us a quick Steve Buscemi impression beat or not? Why am I Mr. Big? <laughs> because you're a faggot. <laughs> right, Big, we're on the last one. He's yeah. got space dementia. <laughs> That's not him. Oh, again, we need to do that water film. No, we do. Right, the last one. Ned, Peter's sidekick, asks jokingly whether he can lay eggs. This is in reference to the Amazing Spider-Man issue 44, where Peter Parker has to solve a bout of spider eggs pouring out of his anus. <laughs> That's brutal. Uh, I have to say false. That is false. This is interesting, though. All right. Two things. Yep. One, there's a fantastic YouTube video which is called Anatomically Correct Spider-Man. Right. Which goes through what he would be like in real life. Oh, we're going to watch it in the metatags. We can do. Okay. It's a little musical ditty that travels... It sings his, his transformation into a spider. All right. It's absolutely disgusting. Oh, my goodness. Spiders don't have penises or something. Like that. They don't fall... They fall spiders' penises fall off after sex. So his Fuck. penis falls off. It's, it's light. It's light. But it's got stuff like that in. It sounds dark. Secondly, there's a, a variation in an alternate universe. There was a series of comics. I can't remember what it was called. Mm-hmm. I think it was to do with the multiverse of Spider-Man. Right, okay. Um, and it's this guy called Patton Parnell. Right. Where he turns into, like, a spider monster. 
Aye, right. The comics, the comics that. Uh... And he lays eggs in Mary Jane, and what? they all hatch outside of her. It's pretty fucked up. Like, because he he gets like a, a bit, baby or he, like little babies come out of where a skin and start eating her. What the? F- so Uncle Ben domestically. Sorry, to spoil all this, but Uncle Ben domestically abuses Peter uh, Patton Parnell and turns him into a psychopath. Right. And he, he starts, like, eating cats and, like, gestating. Because, like, how spies eat, obviously, they'll tie the victims up uh-huh. and spew, like, acid into them and then dissolve them and suck them up. It's, like, got cats, like, hanging in the roofs and it's, like, a, a proper Spider-Man who lays the, babies that way. The, see this shit, you know, what gets me in film horrors... It's not nice, like... More than anything else? Yes. Body deformo- deformation? Yes. Gets us... I hate it. I uh-huh. can't watch horrors on it. <laughs> it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It gives us nightmares for days. Anyway. Interesting, though. That used to freak us out as a kid. Do you know, obviously, the... Is it, was it the Amazing Spider-Man uh, TV series? Just which, the Spider-Man? Was it just the Spider-Man? Uh, which got, like, obviously rave reviews. It was I think everybody hates it. I don't know. Did they really? Yes. Well, I love it. I'm I give, love it as well, but... I'm giving it rave reviews. I think it got, bl- like, blasted, but I love it. <laughs> just because <laughs> I grew up with it. Exactly. And he turns into, like, a spider and that, and it's just minging out. That's that's in the comics. Like he turns into like a huge yeah. mutant spider. He's, that's cool. I love how that. How does that happen? Um, I'm not sure. It includes um, is it Morbius the vampire? Yes, I. I think he just begins to mutate. The he, get, he gets six. Ah, oh, the the, hun- the hun- uh, What do you call him? It's it's really Jesus. it's his story arc. I think it is. The Punisher Craven? gets involved. Craven, Craven, Craven the Hunter gets involved because Peter gets six arms, doesn't he? He's like this is unreal. He starts. Like a hu- he gets an extra set of human arms on his body. But why would you think that's unreal? I think that's psychotic. You'd, you'd be like, "What the fuck?" There's and and then he turns like this, the fly shit. This I know, but then do you know what I mean? And then, I find it funny how the perfectly human hands uh, with like biceps. Jesus, <laughs> that doesn't Christ. make sense at all. But then he turns into a huge spider, which is really creepy. I'd love to see that in films, though. I'm more really interested cool. about this this bloody comic spider. Oh the uh, 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 that's just I mean so that's, that's get, a multiverse so, thing. What does he just go and like? That's a different universe. Find different Mary dimension. Jane. Um, I think it's kind of similar. Uh, as in, Mary Jane likes him because he's kind of shy and hidden. But he's only shy and S- hidden because he's been domestically so abused. So he's a normal guy. No, he's a psychopath. But he's not a spider. He likes hurt ants and stuff like that. But he's not a spider. Or he turns into a spider. Like he turns into like this mutant spider man. He's got like brown hair all over and red eyes and extra tusks, fangs coming out of his mouth and stuff like that. How's he turning that? I don't know. <laughs> Freaky shit. Anyway, it's, how does how does Spider Man climb on walls, swing around? I mean, you know what I mean. It's not much of a of, of a leap. Right. Anyway, that was a big tangent, but I, I felt it's interesting to it's learn interesting about, about that. If anybody it. doesn't know about that, right? So beat now, straight into your points, mate. Whatever, you, whichever way you want to run. My it. points. So I'm basically just going to give things opinions. So spoiler discussion about the film from now on. Fully spoil. There's a possibility it might not spoil the film. There's a huge possibility it will. These are going to be opinions, mm-hmm. and I'll give my opinion on it, and you may want to weigh in on yours, depending if you have one. Mm-hmm. First one, opinions on Sued. Personally, mm-hmm. love the emotion portrayed in his eyes with the use of lenses. Cool. Um, but, find weird CGI effect at all times. So to go and discuss this a bit further, mm-hmm. the, the suit itself... Wait, he always looks like it's CGI'd. Always. Even when he tears the mask off, which is he's just got weird. The suit. In some shots, he's wearing the suit. Yes. But in most shots, special action sequences, uh-huh. it's all CGI. Yes. It's always CGI. But what I will say is, it's damn good CGI. It is? I've got a point down here, on my points. Right. Where I've said, on my like, I've got likes and I've got dislikes. Yeah. I love the suit. I love the style of it. I think it looks great. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, Steve Ditko. I think it's what in I homage did, uh, What I didn't like, the, all the tech shit. Um, I thought the whole idea of Spider-Man is that... You didn't like that? Well, kind of, I liked some points of it. Yeah. I just thought there was a shitload. Like, did, Too much. A lot of the story was based on the suit. I, think, I, should exa- be, I think that's interesting. I, well, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Because he's Peter Parker as well, you know what I mean? He shouldn't, that need, not the per- he shouldn't need a suit to be Spider Man. The entire arc of the film. Well, what I about when, right, right? Remember when he made that point? Sorry, about the, point I, the, the point I make is 
did I did I like that in the film? Did you like Th- that being a major story arc? The suit, the suit making the man. Hmm. I did. I, thought, I, I suppose I like every comic and every Spider-Man comic's got to have a little arc where he learns a little story, really, isn't it? Everybody needs something to overcome in a film. Yeah. So we can cheer for him when he does so. Right. Okay. I'll say I like the suit. Um. I thought it got a bit too techy at times. Right. A bit too Iron Manny. Bit too Iron Manny. Well, a little point I've made. Especially when the lass was talking to him in the suit. Right, right. Do so you know I he enjoyed little features like electric webbing. Yeah, and, yeah. And split shot and stuff I d- like that. I didn't really like when he's talking to the girl in the suit. I didn't right. really like it. Karen. Who, um. Oh, she's someone we know. Right, room for a dream. Played Betty Ann in Hulk. Yes, that's her. Good, good, good shout. Can't remember her name. Jennifer. From or something like that. What? No, 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 no. no. Um, anywhere I saw, she was Jennifer vo- Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. She was the voice of Karen. I. Do you want to move on then? Next one. Um, well, a little point I had that was enjoyed all of the interesting suit functions. <laughs> so yeah. there's a difference in opinion. That's that's fair. I just wasn't hung up on it. I, I just wish that he he just had the, just the technical side of things. I thought there was too much going on. Didn't like that you speak to that Karen all the time. Right. Got that, right. We're not that different function. So, mm-hmm. next point. Characterisation of Peter was perfect. Best oh. we've seen yet, in my opinion. But, was Peter's intelligence displayed correctly? Right, I've made a point At here. At all times. I've made a point here as well. Right. On what I didn't like. Right. Relating to the intelligent bit again, because he's an intelligent lad. Mm-hmm. Does Spider-Man not care about school? Do you know where he's like... You know what he, he's like... Which I thought was a bit of a plot hole. He's mm. like, screw this. I don't care about school. I've got the suit. I'm going to become Spider-Man. This is on the least to be worries. Right. I'm bailing. Would Peter Parker do that? I think... This is from... Because I think that's a misbetrayal, me. I think this is hev- like heavily influenced by Ultimate Spider-Man. Right, okay. That comic book. Mm-hmm. And I think it's... A lot, obviously, he's a lot younger, I believe. A more modern take on 15. the character. Well, he is in the film. I'm not sure what he is in the comic book. But can you imagine being in the shoes of Peter Parker? <laughs> You've already got this great intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, so you might think you're too big for school, if you want to say that. Yep. But every second of the day, you're just waiting to get out them doors and start swinging That's through fair, Boston yeah. or Queens or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that answers it. I don't know. Fair point. Moving on, but are you talking about Tom Holland as a character? Well, his when, when I say it was his intelligence correctly displayed, as in it's shown that he can make the spider formula, mm-hmm. uh, and what else he can I don't know record the suit, yes, which is quite quite a feat. Mm-hmm. But it just when in in certain situations, I would have to try and think of an expl- uh, an example. Um, so the point I was trying to make before we rudely interrupted, yeah. <laughs> was the fact that I just feel that in some scenarios in the film you have Peter Parker who's highly intelligent he's creating his own formula of webs mm-hmm. you know simple yeah. stuff like that yeah, yeah. and uh, he doesn't act on that intelligence maybe it's because you have to have his naivety a naivety yeah um, for the character to be putting himself in that kind of blame that he's young and he's learning I just feel if someone's that intelligent they wouldn't Take the piss when fighting five people dressed as the Avengers, nice. which what? would consequently lead <laughs> to a guy's business exploding and burning in front of his own eyes. So <laughs> it's that way up of naivety and intelligence battling each other. Yeah, kind of constantly. It's kind of helps for the plot to, mm-hmm. to roll yeah. on or it can have consequences. <clears throat> but that was the point I made. Uh, moving on to the next one. Mm-hmm. So the point I was making. Yeah, I feel Keaton was great. Mark acting wise really. yeah but I felt the character may have been a little lackluster <laughs> uh, due to simple motivations he's one for you B. yes so obviously you've got your points I've got mine mm-hmm. I've said I've liked I mean top point is I like Tom Holland I like uh, Michael Keaton yes of course superhero and villain antagonist and protagonist yes loved them thought they were great Michael Keaton's great name he does but, him and his little ragtag group right. are builders. How are they 
<laughs> getting all this alien tech right. and turning it into like fucking world destroying weapons. <laughs> right. The goddamn bricklay in a wall. One minute and then the next minute <laughs> they're making a fucking alien cannon and a shotgun <laughs> fist. Yeah, granted you've got the tinker in there, whatever the fucking guy's called, but Right. Eight year later, they've got a warehouse full of alien fucking weapons. <laughs> you give us eight year and all that shit. We'll probably be able to be I don't know. Fucking a remote. If we're looking at something like that, <laughs> a now, remote. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> give us eight year. We can make we'll a might, toilet. We we'll might be able to make a sky remote. We can make a toilet or a, to- or a urinal that you could use, and it would just evaporate everything you would, put into it. Would would make would make an alien urinal. <laughs> that's what it would make. It would be called the Chitaurulu. Swiftly moving on. <gasps> the Chitaupi. The Chitaupi. They call the Chitauri. <laughs> crickets. John can say a cricket sound for later. <laughs> I'll make it your own. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what I said, but that threw us off a little bit. I was like, would you say that's a plot hole? Or my, not? My, would you say that's a plot hole? My take on that is okay. the question you've got to ask the filmmakers is using the character the Tinkerer a good enough excuse for them to be building that in eight year? Eight year is a long amount of time. You know, a long but amount the, of time. The, it's a lot of time. They didn't um, like introduce the Tinker though. That's just that's, one minute. That's he's like, the thing. He's just in a fucking computer making that's, shit. That's the point. That is the problem. He's not really well introduced. Do you know I don't. I don't really well? have much of an affinity for the character. I don't really know him much. Is he involved in Spider Man or is it the Punisher? I don't know not about it. I'm thinking of Gizmo or someone on a hard drive or someone who helps the you know pu- someone helps the Punisher. About, you know what else pissed us off about him? And like. Well, obviously we're digressing from the keeping point, but yeah, how he kept on going about this. Should, should we should we use the airlock? Should we do the airlock? I was expecting uh, like, something so like incredible. Going, going into space or some shit like that. I, mean, I, I was expecting bigger. Like I didn't know what I expected. It's the shittest thing I've ever seen in my life. There was a large build up to that peeing off. Like it, throughout the film, you dropped hints of oh this this it, this they'd secret already, of they'd already used it on the van. I know, it's I know. the same fucking thing. I know, but it was like a, a seal. Like it was very. It's like a vulture. It, it's, it was it's very. The wings like specific. Uh, like you can only ever use that on a plane. Like, like where else are you going to use that? The, he made it look like a nuclear bomb. I thought you know, it like was some end game. Aye, like an really end game fucking thing. Reveal, big reveal. Like that like you're going to turn Spider Man into bones. Yes, like, that, you know what I mean. Like they did with Shocker. Yes. <laughs> Why did he use that? Well, because. Didn't he pick it up and he was like, oh, that he's the anti-grav thing, but just fucking annihilates him. That was quite a funny Wait, bit. Why didn't he use that on Spider-Man? B, you've just so, you've oh solved the whole thing in so one. So he uses this thing that cuts... That just evaporates, <laughs> shock him. Uh, it's the greatest weapon known to man. And then he goes back to using not... shitty Jatauri tech. Why the, how, why the hell did he not... I don't know. Plot point. I mean... Plot in a future film, if Kingpin finds that, Spider-Man's fucked. If anybody finds that, any villain, it's game over. Oh my god, he's Venom. <laughs> 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 it just melts. There's just tea. Just left on a pile of ash. <laughs> tea in a tongue. There's just Tom Holland left. <laughs> shivering. <laughs> a skinny Tom Holland. Anyway, getting back on track about yeah. Keaton. Um, just a little point about an example, if you want to take it. Mm-hmm. He's given that he finds the identity of Peter... He somehow works it out because Tom Holland's been an idiot and Peter Parker's just staring at him gormously for five yes. hours straight going, oh my god, you're the fucking vulture. That was funny, that. Like, I thought that, was a, good, that right. was a good reveal. Um, I, I enjoyed that reveal. Because it my, shocked my, us that I wasn't expecting it. My stereotype brain yeah. of that fam- modern-day families can't have the same last name as the child. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, uh, he's called Adrian Toomes and it's Liz Allen. Or you can't have mixed race. Yes, of course. White, exactly. Which went over everyone's head. <laughs> yeah. So that's not racist at all. So I've been stereotyping and believing functionless families. <laughs> no, the nuclear family the nu- should be it. No, so that's two whites together. The kind of black children, and they've got to have the same last name. He's one for you, B. Yep. Close your eyes. I've closed them. There's twelve people sitting around a table in a boardroom. All oh, right. There's a guy. Yep. Hmm. How can we think of an interesting twist that hasn't been done before? Let's play on the fact everybody's... I know. Let's play on the fact everyone's everybody's... Everyone's racist. No yeah. one will believe that Adrian Toomes' wife will be black. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Guess what, by the way? It worked. It did work. I <laughs> thought that's quite a progressive, interesting way of actually doing it was, diversity. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. 
to play on that, I think that's very clever, personally. <laughs> so the suits you've done well. But like what you said, if you Peter Peter Pan, I was going to say if you were Peter Pan, if you were Peter Pan, if you were Peter Pan, what would you do right now? Uh, would you hide your 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 fears of him being the vulture behind a, a mask like you can do with or every you, person? Or you would keep you just go, oh, nice to see you, oh, I mean, yeah, oh, have a bit yeah. normal crack? Or would, or would you, you just stare up and go, <laughs> you're the coward. vulture? I think exactly. <laughs> oh, what, a bad, what a bad decision. <laughs> bit of a sweat on there, mate. Big time. He's de- I'm he's, getting into it. He's de-Roman. Can I go further down the, the, the Keaton rabbit hole quickly? You can do what you want, I Robert. Um, The film called Birdman. Yes. Made film. by Inuatu... Last name I can't pronounce? No idea. Good film. Yes. Very arty. If anyone wants Very to watch it, arty. watch it, but don't be expecting a superhero film. Pers- it's not a superhero film. Personally, too ambiguous for myself. I I agree. It's good, but I found it it had a hell of a lot of rear reviews, and I was quite bored in a lot of parts yes. watching it. The problems with me, not with the film. I want to see it. Or is it because yep. it doesn't have two machine guns in it? <laughs> um, what I did take from the film was it acts as a metaphor for Keaton's career. As in his fears, Down the pan. <laughs> his fears, his fears of being recognised as only as Batman applies Which to I him. Was, yeah, it was great. Um, and he wants to go on stage to prove himself. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh my god, this is Keaton. He's kind of changed his life around. He wants to be a proper actor. He's he's expressing <laughs> it through this film. It all works in real life and in fiction yeah, during yeah. the film as well. I thought it was very clever. A lot of things I didn't get in that film. But then, what's the next thing Keaton does? plays the vulture <laughs> in a Stuart Popcorn movie exactly. goes back down the rabbit hole so he kind of discards all the hard work done but, and all the metaphors and all did the did he image. did Keaton get the job because of Birdman no do you not think do you not think there's no well, one if, any, if they watch Ke- Birdman Keaton. and misinterpreted oh, it no, but... completely because Birdman's against that's a, Birdman's the exact opposite of going in and doing a, a franchise film but as a bird based character there's someone there in the boardroom again gone but, and missing that's it you're right who's going to be the vulture God, Birdman <laughs> Michael Keaton's been Batman and Birdman and he's been ba- Birdman <laughs> let's get the motherfucker in that's exactly right that's exactly right so that was a, that's that's that point I just, I just got a picture of Keaton just just hand in, in a, on hand in a robe or a pipe yes waiting by the phone for 20 years <laughs> for bird based Birdman movies. comes along and then he's like, that's oh, it, fuck I'm gone. <laughs> it's going to be another 10 to 15 years before I get another role. Ring, ring. You fancy playing the vulture? <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that wraps that point up, B. He's like, oh, we've finally got a new movie for you. Airplane. <laughs> like, so yeah. like, that's some dumb. That doesn't make any sense. It's not funny. <laughs> Don't laugh at that, Joel. That funny. Don't laugh at it. Um... Ooh, interesting, very interesting point, this. Oh, okay. um, music was forgettable. Right. Very similar to other Marvel projects. Well, he's the one for your beat. Understand that links them together. Understand that links them together. But that doesn't change the fact that it is the first of two major flaws that currently exist in the universe of the Marvel... Ci- <laughs> in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sorry for that blunder. Can I express the two points? You can I'm sorry to keep on button in. The two largest problems with the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is bland music mm-hmm. and villains. Bad villains. In which they've only had one really standout one, which is Kilgrave in um, Jessica Jones, which isn't even the movies. It isn't even the Marvel movie Cinematic Universe. Uh, well, go Pete, on your point. <laughs> Peter Russo, Ant Man. Peter Rousseau. <laughs> the name of House of Cards. House of Cards, I recall. He's an Ant-Man, he's a villain. Is he good at that? No. Because he goes psychotic <laughs> for no reason uh, at yes, all. yes, I know. So that doesn't make sense. Although he's a good right, actor, well, just like Keaton. I'm going to hit you one, beat On my light points. Right. So you're totally wrong. Right. The Michael G- Giacchino score right. is excellent throughout the film. This is your point? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's, point that's a good prediction. The Michael Giacchino score is excellent throughout. You didn't feel it was similar to... The score The score on the film, the music in the film, for me, I liked it. It's on one of my like points. Okay, what I want to say is it's pretty dumb. I loved their interpretation of the, the, the Spider-Man theme. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. What I didn't enjoy is everything else. It sounded so similar See, to... I thought it was brilliant. Um, I thought the score was brilliant. I enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy score. 
But Interesting point, fans. Let us know what you think, because me and Beat are tight, uh, on split. either side of the fence. Coin? Yes. Um, I thought it was very similar to Guardians of the Galaxy score. Orchestral, I mean, but obviously not the modern, yeah. the, the, the the music, but the, the score, the orchestral score. Beat, I respect your opinion, but you're totally wrong. Okay, Moving on. thank you. <laughs> Next point. Casting controversy. I enjoyed both Zenyadas. Is that the correct way of saying that? Zenyada? Oh no, sorry, oh, that's right, an yes. Overwatch character. <laughs> Is that, I don't know. It could she's, be. She's called Zen- Zenyada. Zenyada. Like um, <laughs> who played MJ. Yeah. And Tony Revolori, Flash Thompson. Right. This is where we're going to have a good little heated debate over this one. So, can I... Do you want to give my points or do you want to go first? You can go first. Well, I've just actually said I enjoyed both. You enjoyed both. Is that, is um, that the point? I feel there's a there's the argument of what it means to take a character. Like, if you're not going to what's replicate them in the movie, be it with ethnicity and uh, how they act, mm-hmm. the character themselves, what is the point of taking that character's name? For all intents and purposes, is Flash Gordon? Uh, fuck, fuck, not Flash, Flash Gordon. Gordon yes. Flash Thompson in any way like Flash Thompson in the in the uh, in the comic books? No, not at all. He's just a, a dumb little weird bully. Mm-hmm. But did I enjoy the character? Yes, I actually laughed. I thought it was a really funny part of the film when uh, he's called him Penis Parker, which is childish. That is very but childish. I, I did enjoy it. I thought it was charming. <laughs> when I say penis, you say Parker. <laughs> That's so penis dumb. Parker. That's dumb. Penis. Parker. My father's a little idiot. No, I enjoyed it. I right. did. Beat, um, she's called Michelle, in it. We'll, we'll call her Michelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've already spoiled it. We're too far into it now. We're spoilers, man. It's MJ. I know. Is right. it Mary Jane or is it just MJ? We know because she's called Michelle someone, so it's not Mary Jane. Yeah, but... But, like, they, you made the point. They... You made the point. Yes. You made, made that point, what you going to say. Um, the point I was going to say is they've kind of been very ambiguous of mm-hmm. which MJ it is. I, re- I reckon the one to say it's proper Mary Jane... But they've left it open, so if people react that badly because we're all racist, um, suits can quickly change it and just say, "Oh, she was never MJ; she was always Michelle." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's my opinion. And um, as well, it's just like there. It's the Lex. Well, yeah, the Lex Luthor thing, like out of uh, Batman vs Superman. Yeah. So they, yeah. it's that t- same thing. Uh, as an ing- as flung, an so I expect I never see him go. Yeah, so Jesse Eisenberg's never get out of jail again for any film. That's a good comparison. You might see the dad. You'll see the proper one. So now. The, the left the father ambiguous whether he's alive or dead. I think they said he's dead, but they could obviously bring him back. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the son of Lex Luthor failed, they could get rid of him as he did. I liked her. I thought she was cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about it because again, maybe you know what it's like. People will get on to me for making this point. Right. Be like, oh, you're in the past. PC. Things have, things have got to change. You can't have the same story over and right. over again. But I'm very much, like, back to the beginning of Spider-Man's. Like, I've, I've watched but, all the stuff before. And I I like different takes. But for me, Mary Jane's a good-looking girl with red hair. Yeah. Who Peter... Like fancies, head over heels for me. Hasn't fucking looked at her once in this film. Yes. Obviously they're gonna do that arc. Uh huh. They've got to do the arc. It's gonna happen. She's not that type of character. I enjoy the point you're making. Um, what well, is the point you're making? What's the point of making a Mary Jane if she is nothing like her at all? Exactly. Um, Liz Allen's close. She was good. If she was a standalone character in that, I'd have enjoyed it. Right. You didn't need to make Mary Jane, don't think. Right. But obviously they're gonna have fun with doing this this character arc type thing. But um, for me, again, he, he shows no interest in or whatsoever, which I thought was real weird. Not not even a slight, even this film, not even a slight. Oh, she's turned out pretty hot at the end or something like that, you know what I mean? I feel what happened was, if if they did the same character, Liz Allen's character, I can't remember what the actress's name is, who I enjoy in the film, by the way. She's a good part, yeah, um, Who's more in line with Liz, Liz Allen's character, who's a very minor character, mm-hmm. keeping the same character, one of Peter's first girlfriends, I think. Um, I think they would be too similar. Mary Jane and Liz Allen would be too similar. So I, I, felt, I felt they wanted to differentiate. That's a possible and explanation. Also, and also would be, yeah. if there's a good looking last turn up in the film with red hair, oh, that's you, a, you're going to, there's Jane. no, you know what I mean? There's that's no, also a good point. Yeah, anyway, so we'll, we've nailed that one. Yeah. Flash Thompson, by far, for me, <laughs> The weakest part of the film. Right. I Your abs- biggest gripe. I absolutely hate him. Uh-huh. He's not a bully in the slightest. <laughs> Define bully. 
someone who jock can, <laughs> right so you've jock got, you've got physical bullying you've got mental bullying correct yeah but There's various types he was trying to snipe them and the best he's got is calling them penis part when he's DJing <laughs> a people party. laughing at his jokes and like me Peter was not bothered by him one iota right he knows he could put one swift punch to the temple even if he wasn't Spider-Man right if it was Tom Holland versus that right, character yeah, okay, right? yeah, okay, yeah. Tom Holland would nail him to the fucking Absolutely floor. Absolutely, he would. Huh? He's built like an animal. Tom I want to see the the dumb jock, right? Flash Thompson. Uh huh. Have we seen that in the old Spider Man? We did. Um, Was he in the Amazing Spider Man? Joe Manganiello playing him in the first Spider Man film. Did he? Yes. Ah, oh, yes, he did. Yeah. You know who? Uh, yeah. Is he in Magic Mike? I think this is his film. Uh, well, he's he's now, playing he's Deathstroke, be Deathstroke isn't he? which is very cool. Um, I think that's a good casting. Yes, that's. I uh, absolutely hated that character. Right. Every time he's on screen, I want to rid of him. I enjoyed the character. And I know you're going to say, oh, well, you meant to hate him, he's a bully. No, no, no. I no. didn't hate him because of that reason. I hated him because he didn't he fit couldn't the character. Act, he couldn't act for shit. <laughs> and he didn't fit Flash Thompson's character whatsoever. I enjoyed... And he's a big character. Sorry to keep putting in, but no, he's, no, a, it's okay. he's a big... Am I right in saying he's a big character in the comics as well? This is what I was going to go into. Because how are you going to portray him as a big character in the comics this is what I was going to go into so in the comics Flash Thompson has an arc where he goes from being part of the Spider-Man fan club right because he's he's Spider-Man's biggest fan Mm -hmm. but he hates Peter Parker yeah Um, which is a great little bit of a yes which is all it's always fun but what they did was they took the character and uh, he goes to war he goes to the some sort of um, uh, archetype for the Mm -hmm. Afghan war Comes back, loses his legs, really changes him as a person, so he's not a knob end anymore. Becomes good friends with Peter, and retain. Um, he finds the alien symbiote I, to create him into Venom, and he really? becomes Agent Venom, which became very popular with people, as far as I know. What I'm is saying Venom is, a bad guy or a good guy? Good guy. So it's Venom, but good. Really, he works for the United States as like an assassin, I believe. Mm. Um, I feel they've missed a trip here because they can't do that. Ca- Unless you can get this guy, I don't think he fits the role the vo- the vo- of the vo- same Well, same kind character. of. In the, they've said he's in the same universe, but he's not going to feature any of the films. No, but I, Tom I, Hardy's going to be Venom in here, so you can't, you can't go down them lines. I feel they can't make um, Tony Revolori's Flash Thompson mm-hmm. into Agent Venom. Well, no. In no way. He he, he's the laughing stock, isn't he? Anyway, yeah. So that was the point I was going to make. Anyway, yeah, I, so enjo- I enjoyed his performance. But I completely disagree that he's Flash Thompson. Why make him him I if, if he's not going to fit that role? I just hate him. <laughs> All right. Do you want us to move on? Yep. Was Iron Man's involvement overbearing? I've on my dislikes on here. Yes. I've got didn't like how reliant he was on Tony Stark. Right. Um. For me. I don't know. You're obviously trying to forge a different film. Yes, you try to make the film to the first two. I thought they did that well. Yes, you've also got. Does it incorporate... reflect Spider Man? No, not for me. It's a totally different take on Spider Man. Because would would Peter Park would Spider Man be totally reliant on um, Tony Stark? Because Tony Stark, if he's that young, and he was introduced to Tony Stark, you think you would? <sighs> Obviously, this is heavily influenced by Civil War, mm-hmm. the Marvel comic, yeah. um, <clears throat> where he's taken under his wing. And he's kind of lied to about... He's kind of brainwashed into thinking to fight for his side. Because mm-hmm. uh, in that comic, uh, Tony wants... Uh, just like the films, he wants people to sign up. That's Pe- fair. People want to... So you'll be known as Peter Parker. You've got to have a badge. They've got to track you everywhere you go. And Captain America thinks that's a, that's an invasion of uh, civil and that, rights. And that's like a little lord to the end where he doesn't take the... Yes. I'm... This is the point I was going to get yeah, to. Yeah, you're going to... Uh, yeah, I, move on for it. I personally enjoyed it, mm-hmm. how it worked into Peter's arc right, of becoming Spider-Man without the same kind of thing, you know what I mean? So he wasn't dependent. But a problem I have with it is Tony Stark is the biggest hypocrite ever. One joke about don't do anything that I would do slash wouldn't do does not make this okay. So if we recite what Tony Stark's done in the past, he's an arms dealer... <laughs> You know what I mean? Sell arms to like the America's enemy. enemy, which he did change. But then he made like Ultron. Yeah. So how can he speak? You know what I mean? He's very much an anti-hero, isn't he? At times, would At you times, say that? I wouldn't even say anti-hero. I'd say villain. 
At times he is. He's an idiot. And I don't think Peter should be taking lessons from him. On a side note, do you reckon he'll ever turn into an alcoholic in this universe? Never. He can't do. Do you know what With right? Robert Downey Jr.'s previous drug use. Ah, oh, shit, yeah, I believe that would never make that's it into a good the, uh, point. the script. He'd be able to play it well. Oh, <laughs> Moving on. Rehabilitation. Um, yeah, so... I kind of, look. I enjoyed. I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed that part of the film. I just. I thought he was very much overbearing in it. I personally don't think. I don't. I think they handled it well. I think he was just enough. I thought. I didn't think Peter was ever in danger. What do you mean by that? Because I knew Tony Stark was going to come and save him. Right. Which again takes away from the whole Spider-Man type thing. At points in the film, I was questioning why he didn't intervene, Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this was kind of given back and by. He takes the suit away, and you know when he fights Vulture in the final act, yep. he hasn't got a suit, so Peter doesn't. Well, uh, Tony doesn't know where he is. Yep. But uh, just where, where's the help? His Avengers not going to come to help him. You know what I mean? Right. Again, maybe they're not allowed in Brooklyn. <laughs> maybe, they're, ah, maybe, yeah. maybe they dare not go into <laughs> in Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn or Queens? I mean, the only person who dare go into Brooklyn is Billy Jason, stamping them. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Stamping down radios. Good point. So my opinion, I think they got it right. Cool. Well, <laughs> next. Next point. Uh, this is just uh, picking up on director John Watts mm-hmm. and his decisions not to include Spidey sense. I've also got, I dislike this. Right. Um, I just think it's a cool little thing. And I know it's very much overplayed in the other films. Right. But just because it's overplayed in the other films don't, doesn't mean you can't include it and do it well. Uh-huh. Um, it's a massive part of Spider-Man. Maybe he'll develop it. Maybe it'll develop as as he goes on. I've, I'm thinking what will probably happen is in the next one, it'll not be him. It'll be the suit. They couldn't do that. That's what that's that's what I'm saying. With this with this suit, mate. This is what I'm thinking. Dude, that's a good point. I like that. Oh, it's Karen. <laughs> We're just gonna press a button and I'll I'll okay the ultimate spider sense uh, sentence <laughs> so you can think and get yourself out of danger at any opportunity. That's a great point. You know I mean? like, they can con- fucking what happened, they've got the ultimate on. plot convenience because we don't know what the suit can do. Mm-hmm. It's got five hundred other options. See, he's in a tight corner. He, you can just just to help the plot go along. You can tell him oh, he's got plot device one five two comes springing out and helps him like a parachute. Peter. I'll just uh, spring out the. Vulture disintegrator, yeah, really, 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 and you'll be able to do all these Exactly down. right. I really enjoyed that. By the way, when he went to uh, like weapon mode, he was like lethal tearing down version. You got the red oh, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. That was good. But the point I was getting at is, I saw the director speak in, in an interview, and he stated that he felt that it'd been overused. Like you said before, he personally said it'd been overused. He he didn't want to kind of recreate that because he felt it would be a sort of plagiarism. But do you not think you could have done it coolly in a way? It's like his own way, some sort not, of interesting not, new not, way. Not spider sense, but little nuances to it where it's like, you know, see you hear a knock at the door, you think you hear a knock at the door, something like that. Right, it's like right. something little and you're like... Very like very subtle. Subtle, yeah. Very subtle and not called spider sense. And <laughs> just subtly do it. And super then super the, brilliant And the stuff. audience will go... Hmm, oh, that's spider sense? Actually, that might be spider sense. At least you know once, I mean? do it once. Yeah. Don't to keep him doing it. You know what I'd do, personally? Do the exact opposite. Proper comic book blue lightning bolt above the head. <laughs> That's exactly what, what I'd like do. Full, fully do it. Fully do Like a game. Like it's out of a, a game. Like bright orange lightning slow bolts. Slow-mo. No slow-mo because that had been done in Spider-Man 1. Was that done in Spider-Man 1? Oh, it was, to wasn't death, it? Yeah, to it death, was which is death, fun, right? but it would be plagiarism. Yeah. I'd personally go, woof, big flash of light. <laughs> or even flash the screen. Flash your cinema audience. Sorry to the apolytics. Spider-Sense going and it's flashing and all you hear is, penis bugger. <laughs> <laughs> penis bugger. Flash <laughs> Thompson, yeah. I like it. Yeah, Christ. So that's that point covered. Last point, mate. Yeah, cool. Um, even though character has been included out of Ultimate Spider-Man e.g. The Prowler Aaron Davis cool yep um, I believe they would struggle to introduce Miles Morales in this universe as it retains some influences so the point I'm making is in Miles Morales' origin he has a friend called Ganky Lee Right. Gang Lee, 
who is Ned, the character oh, Ned right. in yeah. this, the, the big... Oh, so they just br- the they large... brought him over and put him in uh, like the normal Peter Parker verse. So, this is what I'm getting at. If you retell the story of Miles Morales in cinema and bring him in to this universe, do you change his origin story? Because it would be very similar to Tom Holland's. Why don't you beat? Yes. Do the old switcheroo and you saw, say, three, four films time. Right. Probably more knowing Sony. Uh huh. If they think they want a good thing with Tom Holland. Right. He'd be in everything and everywhere. Yes. But, say, it comes to the part where. He he dies or something like that. Yes. Because it is said uh, we don't find out the age of the Prowler's nephew. Nephew. Right. So it could be very. So he could be a baby. Young. Yes. At the minute, you know what I mean. So uh-huh. it's, they can work it however they want to work it. But what if his best mates are uh, Harry Osborn instead of being Ned? So it's like a little bit of a role reversal. Have you thought that up? I just there. I just thinking. So Miles Morales's mate could be Harry Osborn. And they don't need to do the whole, whole Harry Osborn thing for Peter because they've already done that. That's you incredible. So imagine if Peter Parker took the origin of Miles and Miles took the origin of Peter oh, Parker. So it's like a bit of a. That's nuts. Because that makes sense because in ten years' time they can go back and revisit that the whole Green Goblin storyline, do it better. I like that. Uh, Maybe fans wouldn't because Green Goblin's Pete's arch enemy. Yes, but I very much like that. It's a little change like that, which is very cool. But while we're on the top of uh, Green Goblin, what yes. do you think of... Uh, oh, what's the dude out of uh, Chronicle? Who played the Green oh Goblin? God. <laughs> what do you think of his performance? Dane DeHaan. What do you think of Dane DeHaan's performance as the Green Goblin boot? Absolutely awful. <laughs> Not particularly getting on to him, right? But what about when he had the... Awful the, makeup. The, horn, the horny <laughs> hair. Stupid the horny end. hair, like he's out of Ish Ventura. And like the green veins. <laughs> Weird green veins. Robotic... <laughs> I mean, robotic sinister six. He's got a robot arm. He Jesus looks like half Christ. Power Ranger. And by the way, there's two villains in that. I, I can't believe Electro isn't enough. I know. There's three. The rhinos in it. The right eye. What a mess. Will we later get on in fan questions about opinions on other Spider-Man films? Yes, we will do. Okay, we've just hit the hour mark. Let's hurry up. No bother. Uh, we'll quickly we'll go over my points if you want, Pete. You will go over your points. We'll give quick little summary. So if you some, if you finish your points, I've fully you? finished mine. Right. So uh, some that we haven't spoken about is. I like, so I'll just go from me liked. I like that Spider Man isn't 30 in this one. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah, I really. We touched upon. That's. I liked that the music wasn't shoved down your throat. It, okay. In a. In like a. Suicide Squad way. Suicide Squad way. way. Yeah. Suicide I think, way. I think there were. Um, there was times where you had the pop culture music in there, especially at the end in the credits. Which right, I, right. I love the Hey Ho, Let's Go bit at the end. Oh, that was an excellent ending. Well, Fantastic. And I, I enjoyed enjoy the big that. cartoon stuff in the back. That was so um, good. Who makes that stuff? But it wasn't, I don't think it was shoved down your throat, which I liked. Right. I liked that it was a enjoyable Marvel film. Yes. That's what I'd class it as. I like seeing enjoyable films as well. Because, like you say, Pretty, we'll, we'll, we'll you, you, you believe they're average overall, or no, at no, least like them, are like good. Them. They're all too just um, good. And we touched upon uh, all the, the other likes. Some of the dislikes I've got. Yes. Um, my first one is that I knew the full film from the trailer. Oh right, that's a good point I've missed. That out I dislike. On. I think I would have enjoyed this film more if we hadn't seen the film. This is a good. And point. I hope the person who's in charge of advertising. Is bloody sacked. <laughs> it's axed. Because it's absolutely ridiculous. They're always going to make money because it's Spider Man. Right. Uh, but why put that many trailers in? You're absolutely correct. Um, the What I was going to say is about this in my notes section, I've I've got a full kind of point. B, I, we were, full we went through We went through before. Beat made a full like load of points. Little stuff like Pete goes to Germany, vlogs his actions and so on. This just, is completely just, just off Just all, off the trailers. All trailers. And it was like ridiculously. You'd pretty much nailed the film. You just got a couple of things wrong the wrong way. It was all in the wrong order. Aye, but, <laughs> that wasn't for you. You know what I mean? It's but like, you, you're sitting the, in, Prime example. Yes. We'll end on this point. Yes. The ship scene. Right. With the ferry. Yes. That's the main the main action, action scene piece in, 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 in Act the, 2. You see it in the trailer? You see the final I scene in Act 3? I was watching it and I'm just like... Sitting Waiting. There. I, When's I, that going to happen? Uh-huh. I, exactly, which oh, is I know, shit. I know. Um, I've got... I, I dislike that it was very safe. I, I thought you, it was a very safe film. We've had this conversation can, can before. You, can you expand on what you mean by safe? I thought it was a Marvel film. All Marvel films are great. I don't think they're touching any... I think Deeper amazing, issues. I I think Amazing Spider-Man. Right. 
Would really? you say that was a dark filler? I thought it was. A, it, it touched on dark themes. It's dark. And people it? hated that. Did they hate that? I think they did. I don't know about Spider-Man that. Spider Man 3. <laughs> dark themes <laughs> when he's like. <laughs> gets in love and I'm going to go into Spider Man oh, no. 3. I just. I didn't think it brought the boundaries. I thought it was very. It stayed within the limits of being a good film. Right. It okay. could have it could have been an absolutely excellent film. And hell, it's got rave reviews. There's a lot of people think it's an excellent film. I think it's a good film. Can I uh, moving on? Can I quickly put two points in? Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the scene, which contradicts your point, uh, when he was buried under the rubble and he's crying out for help mm-hmm. and nobody comes. I thought that was very serious. Right, yeah. I really enjoyed that. I, will, I did enjoy that bit. And there's a, literally one second when the vulture first appears and he peers down at Pete and, it's and it does this like vulture yeah. noise and it's the scariest thing that, I've ever that's seen that's a great shot and you just see his eyes oh, I, like, that's really, really good costume intimi- design as well really intimidating they're the two points I got um, I didn't think there was enough wisecracks in there right I know you thought there was he says he's, he has a bit of a joke right I liked when he was in the bank uh-huh. and like Thor that was Hulk. great he makes Thor and Hulk I think he fights <laughs> fight, <laughs> okay, he punches no, one of them he's never met them um, as well but for, throughout the film I didn't think there was that many you don't Whips. want to, ah, you don't want it overbearing but in a Spider-Man comic yes. he's holding them in left right and centre he is do you know why why to combat the fear of the situation he's right, in yeah, he's so he's only a 15 year old he's got a kid. It, it's a defence mechanism very cool Um, Az made a point as well is this a fan? A fan made a point, yeah. Are we going to fan questions or is this... We will be going to fan questions right, later. Right, right. Um, and it's the same point as what I'm going to make here. Why is Aunt May sexy? <laughs> Do you not think she's more vulnerable as an old woman? That's I hated that. I know a lot of people again are saying, move with the times, it's a good little thing. She's got a good bit of funny crack in her. Just provides funny moments. Uh-huh. But when, when Aunt May's an old woman, you really feel like she's in danger at all times. Right. Where I... I don't feel like a sexy Aunt May is in danger. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, anyway, can I put me two pens yep. in on that one? Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed the character. I loved the portrayal by Tr- M- Marissa Tomei. Uh, I thought it was really funny how uh, they kept on going to different places and everybody kept making the yep. hot joke. Uh, and I still think I, f- I think you feared for her being in danger, although she wasn't in the film, uh, just because how. She portrayed the character. I don't believe age matters in that mm. in that argument. That's what we differ because I, that's my opinion. For me, I think she's more an vulnerable. An older Aunt May is more vulnerable, and you're right. worried about I her. I understand. Um, what the point was that? Finish it. <laughs> so we'll go on to ratings now, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Sure. I'll just blast mine off first. So obviously, I love Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. Love Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. I thought Tom Holland's portrayal as Spider-Man was pretty much spot on. Right. I thought it was excellent. The only point I picked up on, maybe a few more quips, but again, there's probably people listening and thinking, what's he on about? It was There was loads in there. Right, right. I'd probably need to see the film it's again. divisive. Uh, I enjoyed the look of the suit. Yes. I thought the suit was excellent. The design. Bar the iron, you know, we haven't spoke about the iron suit at the end, mm, which yeah. I thought was pretty, I thought he was going to swap into that suit, but obviously, I, I don't really like the design of that, but I think they're going to keep it for like, Infinity War. Where he's, he might have to fight in space or some shit I like, like, that. I like that. I was quite disappointed by that because I thought it was that is the moment in civil in the comic book Civil War mm-hmm. where Peter Parker comes out to the world as Spider Man. Like Spider Man comes out of the world as Peter Parker, and he gets this incredible red and gold iconic. It's called the Iron Spider suit. And this, if he doesn't wear it in the film, this is your chance to show mm-hmm. us that perfectly. Unless it's getting used later on in the It'll timeline. Be, I don't think they need to throw it in now. I thought they butchered it. Why Why make a, a hodgepodge, weird armoured suit that's not iconic at all? When you've got this unreal red and gold one, waiting, hunt, like, hide this Easter egg in, free of charge, and they didn't take yeah. that chance, I was disappointed. I know. Uh, so, I'll, by that, I like I the score in the film. I know you didn't. I thought Michael Giacchino, it's one of the as Marvel films go right and if I think if you watch it back again you might you might like pick them on a little bit more right right um, what I disliked which we went through there I think it's very safe saw a lot of the film in the trailers I didn't really like how reliant they were on Tony Stark um, didn't like Flash Thompson I also thought a lot of the other support characters were pretty bland right um, I liked MJ Liked it. I kind of like Ned. I thought he was good. He's he funny. was excellent. I thought he was really funny. But the other ones were a little bit bland. Um, 
I even to be fair, I thought you know who you, you like. You know the name of the obviously the love interest. I didn't really. Oh, like, Liz Allen. I didn't really like her. I thought she was, she was pretty bland. Right. Boring. Um. But other than that, did I enjoy myself? Yes. I went to the film. I enjoyed it. Uh, well worth admission fee. So I'll go straight into it. I'll just give it a solid seven out of ten. Right. A, a good a good seven out of ten. And this is when I think we should bring half ratings in because pretty much every film I reviewed has got a seven out of ten. This is a problem. Uh, it's going to be. Um, maybe, maybe we might scrap the the whole system later on anyway, down the we'll line because there will be fault appearing. How about you, be? Um, very similar points. We've had our differences, with, which have been previously explained in the podcast. Yep. Uh, a really fun film, colourful, very nice take on the character. I love him just seeing. I love seeing Peter Parker just swinging about, eating a little sandwich. He <laughs> <Like, laughs> tucks his little yeah, mask up. Cool, yeah. uh, I like the humour. I like the tone. I thought each act kept consistent in pace and. It was interesting. It didn't lull, kind of thing. Villain was fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Keaton's uh, performance, Ned was great as a side character. Mm-hmm. Uh, problems. Eh, music was a bit boring. Villain was a bit dull. Other than that, uh, I really enjoy it. Really had a good time. We've had a good time in movies recently. So I was struggling to rate this. I give Baby Driver an eight out of ten. Right? Did I think this was a better film than Baby, Baby Driver? I don't know. So, I'm going for 8 out of 10 as well. 8 out of 10 as well? Yes. That's fair. Which I is f- a fantastic I'm movie. I'm a massive Spider-Man fan. Huge, eh? And I don't know. There was something missing there. Do you reckon? You keep no say, venom. You keep telling me, go explain yourself. I can't. Right. In my heart. <laughs> it helps. In my heart. Right. There was something missing in that film. Right. But I enjoyed it. It wasn't magical. No, it wasn't. Right. And I still believe Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man film. Right. With Doc Octopus in. Uh-huh. I just think it's... As a story, the Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 film is excellent. Right. From start to finish. hmm And that's got problems as well, but I do enjoy that film. Right. And all the Spider-Man portrayals has been. Okay. Um, and that wraps up ratings, really, so... Excellent, man. 7, 7.5. Average score. That's not bad. Which I think is, that's perfect. Which is really. a perfect rating for yeah. it, really, I think. Right, Beatles, we'll go into some fan questions now. Excellent. Right, we've got Makassa again, member of Cross Haller. Makassa, welcome. He's asked, Rank the modern Spider-Mans in order of best to worst. Include Homecoming. If you've seen it. Do you want my take? We've seen it. Do you want my take? You will be. Amazing Spider-Man 2. We're going... Best to worst. Best to worst. Or do you want to go worst to worst best? Worst to best is more interesting because okay. Spider-Man 2 and Homecoming is the big go, drop rooney Go worst to best. If if mine's exactly the same... I'm going to agree with your points anyway. I'm, if you, we'll if, talk about... I, 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 I trust you to make the point. We'll both make... I'll make it for us both. Yep. Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yes. Horrendous. Do you think that was worse than Spider-Man 3? Absolutely. Right, okay. I like Spider-Man 3 because it's got a little bit of Sam Raimi in it. And it's got a bit of venom in. One inch of Sam Raimi's... What happened there? Did he get taken off it? Yes, he wanted to do a film uh, revolving want... around Sandman. I ah, didn't want to put venom in it, did he? He didn't want to put he, venom he in it. He didn't think venom would be done, but no. they wanted venom in. Probably similar to um, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Because they need to set up a Sinister Six universe. Right, come on then, what are you going with? Terrible. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the worst. Followed by Amazing Spider-Man 1. Really? I hate it. I don't like Andrew Garfield. I like Andrew Garfield. Like Andrew Garfield too cool. Either. He's too cool. I know. And I do not care about these characters. Yeah, you're right. You're right. right. Okay. <laughs> Next. Spider-Man 3. Yep. For obvious reasons. Tom Maguire, I love you, but what are you doing with the emo fringe? <laughs> <laughs> Um, he also beat up Mary Jane, which I don't know how to feel about. <laughs> <laughs> he literally pimp slaps her. I doesn't he? Um, oh my god, when he wants to film again. Followed by Spider Man 1, which is a great film. I really enjoy it. Yes. Spider Man Homecoming. Boot what? And then Spider Man 2. Have you gone back on yourself? I enjoyed Spider Man Homecoming, but I never said it was better than Spider Man 2. Oh no, did you not make that point? I did not make that point. Well, I still think Spider Man 2 is the best. I thought about it a long time. I wanted to say straight out of the film that that was the best Spider Man film I've seen. 
It's a close one, it's good. But I thought, if I give it time and watch Spider-Man 2 again, am I going to make that We're gonna, point? We'll watch Spider-Man 2 again. I think Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man film because it's Sam Raimi. He's the fucking best, man. Oh, it all goes wrong. Doc Ock loses his wife. You've got Pete's... Doc Ock's wife dies to give him a reason to turn mental. Y- you've got Pete's conflict with himself. He's getting sick and tired of Spider-Man or has ruined his life, so he starts losing his powers. It's so good. It's such a good character film, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. But uh, that's it. There you go, my casa. Cool. Enjoy man. it. <laughs> Love it, right. We've got uh, the ever-reliable boss. He's back. He's Sp- in the room. He says, Spidey question. Which Spider-Man villain Ooh. from any of the movies would make the best prom date and why? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, I've got a good answer. So this is a stretch, boss, but you have to bear with us. In Sam Raimi's Spider-Man universe, the character Bruce Bruce Campbell's character appears in all three films as different characters. Really? So there's a fan there's a fan theory that he's Mysterio. Right. So how does he appear? He, at first, in the first one, he appears as. Someone. <laughs> I know in the second one, he appears as a, uh, uh, what do you call it? He's at the opera. He's like right. a ticket man. Right. Isn't he? And in the third one, he appears as a waitress or something like A waitress, because he wants to give the ring to Mary Jane. So there's a fan theory so that the he's, fan a, he's is, Mysterio. He's Mysterio. That's weird, that like. Um, I think Mysterio was cut as well, in some of his plans. So, using that character, I'm going to say Mysterio. <laughs> Because he could fool you into thinking you're dating Jessica Alba. I, I, I like that. Alright, so there's the answer. Well, I'm stretching at this one as well. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go Doc Ock. Ooh. But he needs some pair tits. <laughs> <laughs> He's got eight arms. He can give you a goddamn reach around. The best way it <laughs> possibly be. Oh my God. Now I'm talking he can dance if he wants to. He can leave his leave friends him. behind. Excellent. What about his claws? And then... Back in the car, we're going to Lover's Creek. <laughs> oh my god. I'm undoing his shirt. He's got a pair of tits. Imagine his karma suit with Buck out. And good time octopus arms. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> Fair play. So if he's got Ian Oct- octopus arms, how many tits has he got? Two on his chest, two on his arse. Does <laughs> <laughs> so that mean every time he sits down, he squirts milk out of his bot? <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know what just happened there. So there's two good answers. I mean... There's a tangent. I mean, I never ever want to Mysterio go on again. Mysterio could probably make you have that reality. It all seems this. Why the hell have we not picked a woman villain? I like. <laughs> oh, it would have to be in the film. Oh, Why would we two men? Felicia. You picked Bruce Campbell, <laughs> and yeah. I picked Doctor Otto Octavius. Okay, okay. Well, in Amazing Spider-Man Two, Black Cat doesn't appear, but the character does. Felicia Jones or Hardy. Foggy Felicia Jones, you've got Dr. Octopus. Fair play, <laughs> okay. Right, I love that one, boss. Thanks very much, mate. Right, so we've got a last question. It's from our friends at NTFTT Pod. Excellent. You can get them at NTFTT Pod. And they've asked, are all the Spider-Man reboots a long con so Sony can make a Spider-Man movie with every Spider-Man actor in it? Ooh. Spider-Vengers. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So this happened in the comic books. But really, it's called the Spider Verse. What? Where they took every reality Spider Man and put them into each of us. <laughs> what into one comic? Yes, there and was. What were the fighting? A villain of kind of vampire-like creatures who would eat spiders. Jeez. So you know Patton Parnell. Mm-hmm. He's there's a little scene which appears an, an Easter egg to him in the comics. He's on the table as like a chicken. You know, like a chicken kind of <laughs> banquet. Right. Aye. He's like curled up in the middle. Being oh. eaten, so they eat. I think that the the, the main villains villains called more more loon or something like that. It's like dumb vampire people. So that might be in reference to the cinematic universe possibly doing that sometime. Right, maybe. Right, be so we're on that point. I'm gonna go. You've got Toby Maguire, right? Andrew Garfield, yes. And Tom Holland in a room, yeah. Who's win the fight? Who wins the fight out of them? Out of the three of them. Tom Maguire, because he's like a 40-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks... Tom Holland can do a backflip. That he can. And also eat a hot dog with his finger <laughs> while doing a headstand. 
Uh, Andrew Garfield looks too cool to do damage, Joe. Like, Tommy McGuire. He would be worried about his quiff getting fucking yes, done, wouldn't yes. he? Yes, He'd be too busy, like, calming it. <laughs> Tommy McGuire is just a, a little a monster. Troll. <laughs> he's just a little 40 year old troll. He's probably a very nice man in real life, but he's a troll man to us. He's going to bite your face off. <laughs> Turn to a dog. That's true for the That Australian, Australian spider, guy. Spider dog? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 YouTube yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, anyway. That's the last question, but uh, we've got a few points on here, which is as, as is given to us. Right. So that's As vs. The World. What a legend. He's been mentioned on a couple of shows now. Excellent. You're nearly in Cross Hallam here. Nearly there. Right, so he says. I did enjoy it, but I've got some massive gripes. Right. First, apart from the wall climb ability, he had no spider sense, no quick reactions. Why? You kind of put on this, you yes. know, like jump a lot. This guy seems to be pretty average jumping. What do you mean? <laughs> like <laughs> Spider-Man, like jump. Oh, probably. right. Yeah. So his super his super physical yeah, strength yeah. gives him the ability to jump. This guy is driving a fucking car rather than use his abilities. Would that be quicker? It Why are be. we asking the question? I don't know. Is that a plot hole? Maybe it's because Audi paid the film director a lot of money to put an Audi car in one. I scene. mean, I'm sitting there in the cinema. Drop me popcorn thinking, why is Spider-Man driving a car? We were trying to think about... We were thinking that he lost his web shooter. We were like thinking, oh... Why has he, has he only got one gone web shooter? Because right? I thought Spider-Man could run really fast. Because his muscles were... I did enjoy the bit when they're in the park. And they were like... <laughs> and he could Because like, that, that needs touching upon. It does, I. But you don't even get him driving. You know what I thought that scene was? I thought he was trying to test his range of his web shooters. <laughs> on, a, on a golf course, because he would have yardage meters. But then I realised... Oh, he's got no trees to swing on. Uh, <laughs> again, as says, but he says, apart from Tom Holland and Michael Keaton, the rest of the cast was poor. Right. And she said, he says, shoot the casting director, Sarah Finn. Oh, good God. Aunt May, way too hot. <laughs> I mean, for problems, that's not a bad problem to have, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> as then goes on to say, also, Keaton's character turns to weapons dealer, can he fast? <laughs> Making weapons that even Stark Industries could even make with air tech. <laughs> it's a good point. I think it's a great point what we've said as well. <laughs> These are builders. They know how to do grouting, plumbing, <laughs> and maybe screw a few appliances in. Yes. They got done making alien weapons within eight years. <laughs> how does that work? Made the Tingra. The Tingra does it. There's your explanation. The explanation Ooh. is the weird, fat, geeky looking guy who we don't know of any background yeah, whatsoever. can do it. <laughs> and he's just going to say, I know in eight years, as well, we'd all be weapon dealers if we could do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, nah. 100%. Who says yeah, we're not close. now? Uh, what's that? Who says we're not now? <laughs> and uh, that wraps it up, here, really. Excellent. That wraps this show up. Game of Thrones. Of what time? Why I? Okay. Game of, just a quick cap. So anyway, we Wondering whether we do like a film as usual and then incorporate Game of Thrones or just or do Game of can Thrones. Can talk about Game of Thrones for a full episode? I think we can probably talk about Game of Thrones for a full episode. So we may switch to... Well, we might do a midweek Game of Thrones episode. Right. As well. But then Sometimes. That might <laughs> that might hang back the film episodes a little bit. Right. Do you know what I mean? Depend on so scheduling. So if we, if we do a midweek uh, Game of Thrones... Then we'll do like maybe a week and a half film one. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It's gonna get us into a vicious circle. We'll never be able to get out of. But right. Don't expect anything. Expect yeah. everything. <laughs> so Game of Thrones beat. How do you think this new episode's gonna start on Monday? How's it gonna start? How, what, what's gonna be the opening scene? Do you think? <sighs> it's gonna be hundred percent. Do you want me prediction? Daenerys taking the Iron Islands. Do you reckon? Shit, not the Iron Islands. <laughs> I was gonna say Daenerys. That would be good to me. That to, main character. Dragonstone, where. So she, Stannis Baratheon so you, held. Do you think she just pulls up on a dragon stone and that takes that? That is going to be the first scene. Because is that currently, there's no one there? Currently there's no one there. I mean, Stannis left it to go to the north to get the it's help not of brilliant, John. Is it? It's not like it's going north. down now, It's a bit it? of a shithole because yeah. it's made out of dragon glass. But with Targaryens, I think the Targaryens that made it were mad. Right. Um. So, mm -hmm. but what I don't understand is, is Daenerys sailing past... Um. The Red Keep, because I believe the way a boat's go... A lot of people go, think that she's going to go straight towards the uh, the Red Keep. 
Because you have to seal past that to get to Dragonstone. So, so the Reckoning is going to go and build straight into Red Keep. That's a possibility. Tear Westeros. I could get it completely wrong. Spoilers though, there is mm-hmm. a scene of Jamie Lannister on horseback charging at something with a pike with everything around him on flames. Is he charging at a dragon? Jesus Christ. Beat? You spoil that one for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, but my point, I think I think I'll probably start with uh, Cersei. Straight into Cersei's theme. Tension her, her between... Her on the throne. Tension between And then her. you find out, in that first episode, that first five minutes... Yes. ...what her plan is. Right. Straight away. What What can she do? She's queen. I mean, she's queen of the fucking... She's got to be the next one to die, isn't she? Do you By think? who? Daenerys. Probably really? will kill her eye. I think it's it has to come full circle. You want, you want a better payoff? You want your favourite character to be? Yes, Jamie's my favourite character, for reasons we may go into in a, a further yeah, episode. Yeah. I just feel... It, it, what the show does is and the books but you love a good story I love, you? I love it they set things up well in advance because you read the books at a certain point yes I have and there's constant references to the relationship between Jamie and Cersei it's always it's gradually become less and less strong should I say so, so even in the books he's, the books, start, he's got a proper story out in the Jamie, books as well. Jamie starts realising he's being manipulated by Cersei when he thought he was in love with her Right. Because Cersei sleeps with other men whilst he's away right. when he gets captured by yeah, yeah. Vargo Holt, who's not in the show. Right. But uh, I just I feel it's too set up, it's too foreshadowed mm-hmm. for him not to be the main sword through the heart of so, Cersei. So do you think it's going to be a case of Cersei wanting to eradicate all enemies, Jon Snow wanting to... Eradicate White Walkers. Tell Cersei that we need to band together. Yes. Because White Walkers are coming. Uh huh. To kill us all. Uh huh. And then you've got Daenerys riding in, who really doesn't know what she fucking wants. I don't think John will even have time to get down there. I think Daenerys will wipe her out before. Before. So you reckon it's going to be Cersei versus Daenerys before John gets involved? Big time. Right. We will discuss this further, but I think I think I'm I'm the only person in the world who hates Daenerys. Do you? I don't like her. I don't right. want it to succeed. Read the books. Go read some books. Read the, <laughs> read some books. Natural Libra. Worst um, from what I'm saying. Do you not like... Do you, do you feel she's become boring? As in... She, she's fell, she's fell in... I was going to say she's fell in everything she's... Like succeeding, but she's also been raped by Dothraki. Yes. <laughs> and been through a hell of a lot, Locked so... At. You can't say that, but... The problem is she's a lot younger. Or meant to be portrayed. Mm, I feel... Um, she just kills everything as well. Like she's not. Right. A good, she's not a good person. I think that's interesting, though. She's not a good person. She just kills fucking everything. Is that not interesting? She's got a problem. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fucking kill them. That's what she says straight away. On for everything. me, that's a strength for the character. That ambiguity yeah. in whether she's good or bad. I'm happy that John's got the uh, the, the king of the north. The king of the north. I'm I'm happy with that. That's usually usually a bit of sweet title. Because we're from the north. Yeah. Come on. That makes You've got sense. to support the fellows. Yes. But anyway, I think we're drawn on now, uh-huh. just to set you up. Love Game of Thrones, that's yes. going to be a regular feature. Excellent. All right. Good, good. So, Spider-Man Homecoming beat, done. Fully done, mate. Enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's going to get stuff off depend, your chest. Depending on what time we've got, because we want to do Plant the Apes, we also want to do Dunkirk. Plant the Apes, Dunkirk, and there's film but, with Jamie Lannister in, which I want to see as well, about becoming... But I pose to beat. I, I want to do because it's been a while before we've had beat points properly. Yes. Mark Wahlberg's Plant of the Apes. Tim I Burton. Want, I want to do Tim Burton, Plant of the Apes before we go and see the new Plant of the Apes. Okay. It's gonna be a bit tight. We'll okay. see whether we've got the time to do it. We'll see. Anyway, I've been John. I've been beat rude. And this has been the Talk and Cross podcast. Thank you, people. See you later, people. Bye bye. Oh wait. Huh? Sorry. Before we go off. Yeah. We forgot a plug. Oh, Follow us, I? like us, Twitter talking crass. We're on iTunes talking crass, SoundCloud talking crass. Build the fan base, leave reviews. We're also on Patreon if you want to donate any money to us, so we can get talking crass T-shirts and also more vodka and orange. Fair play. Yeah. You don't really need to donate. You we do not do, need to donate. We're just doing it for the crack. But you can leave. You can leave us a five star review on iTunes. We would greatly appreciate that. Right, so that's that's it, babe. That's the plug and done. Excellent, man. See you later, peeps. Bye bye.